Wasn't Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, just a kid's movie? No. It explored the consequences of living selfishly, learning to cherish the people close to you, and themes of abandonment, trust, and facing one's mortality. Animation is cinema. It's a saying I've seen on Twitter with pictures of four anim animated movies or TV shows. The medium of animation is often looked down upon because it's seen as children's entertainment and is underutilized or is simply not seen for what it truly is. However, in the next eight to 10 minutes, I will show you why animation is cinema. The vast majority of Americans don't respect animation. They think of your hard work as a pacifier for their kids. This is said by a Disney animator named Matt Brawley, who has worked on shows like Amphibia for Disney. And it very well describes how many people view this medium. Because, and because many of the most popular anima animated movies are family friendly, examples being The Lion King, Frozen 2, and Super Mario Bros. movie, these are the most highly profitable animated movies of all time. And, it would make, and they are family friendly, so it would make sense for people to think that it is just a medium for kids. However, there are many mature animated movies out there, like the first Slam Dunk, Demon Slayer Nugent Train, and the most popular one, The Simpsons Movie. And the first Slam Dunk and Demon Slayer are very recent movies coming out within the last five or so years. So not only is animated, not only are, is mature animation on the rise and still growing, the Simpsons movie is a perfect example of a movie that's been popular for many, many years, coming out in 2007. And many movies are far more complex than, than we give credit for. For example, Ratatouille. Adults can relate to Linguini and, and Remy's journeys of finding themselves in their work and proving they can be great and fun height and there are many fine, fun hygienes for younger watchers to enjoy. And the spectacular Spider-Man, a Spider-Man show that was originally that is typically aimed at children, it has very mature takes on Peter's double life as Spider-Man, which older people can possibly relate to, the struggles of balancing your hard a hard work life and maintaining a social life, with him maintaining within trying to maintain romantic relationships and friendships throughout high school. And it's also very well written, very funny, and many great action scenes for younger for younger for younger audiences to enjoy. So it is so both of these movies both of these series are examples of of animation being made for everyone, not just kids or maybe not even just adults. Animation is not a genre, because animation is simple. You might have heard of this man, Guillermo del Toro. He is the maker of Pinocchio, the movie, the movie that won the best animated picture for 2022. Animation, despite its many genres, the animation, animation, despite the many genres that fall under it, are all considered for one topic at the Oscars. And, and are not considered for any other awards. And this was originally done in 20, 2002 for 2001 movies, where the original winner was Shrek by DreamWorks. And these are many movies that have won since then. For standout examples are Spirited Away by Studio Ghibli, Pixar's The Incredibles, Toy Story 4, Coco, Inside Out, Frozen. It's a very, and the thing is, only three animated movies have ever been nominated for Best Picture. And those are Up, Toy Story 3, and Beauty and the Beast. And this is the main problem with this. They are all considered under one genre being animation. The Oscars, like for example, has Best Comedy Picture, Best Romance, Best Drama. These, those are genres, and animation is considered the same way. When genre, genre is, a narrative, is the narrative conventions of a piece of art and cannot be the same for every movie. And that's the main problem with this. This is like saying Into the Spider-Verse is even in the same running or even 
able to be classified under the same movie as the Care Bears, the Big Wish movie. They're far too different stylistically, tonally, and completely different genres. So we cannot have them be considered under just one genre. Animation is completely irreplaceable and not suitable for live action. And sometimes it's not suitable for live action. Here's an example. <laughs> into the Spider-Verse, which many of you guys probably saw over the summer. And this is from the chase scene when, Mi when Miles is running from all the Spider-People trying to chase him because of his anomalous status. And personally, I do not think this could be done very well or even to the same caliber in live action. Because of all the human body restrictions, the restrictions we still have on because of CGI. Could, could CGI probably do this? Maybe. But I do not think it could ever come to the amount of I don't think it could ever reach the same levels of expression, the, the, the vast amount of spider people in the shot, the movements, the different models seen, like, it's just far too, like, live action is far too grounded to be able to capture the same thing that animation is able to capture. Plus, many, uh, plus, many animated pictures are often less expensive. For example, this movie's budget was only nine, was less than 100 million, which compared to a lot of movies coming out nowadays is honestly a technical marvel. It also allows for better suspension of disbelief. And I think this scene is a lot easier to sell when the characters aren't real. You can see them moving in the very extravagant ways that they're moving in the scene. And it also is, and also, animation is just extremely, allows for ex wide ranges of emotions. For example, the series One Piece. These are all different shots from the exact same show, yet they're able to capture so many different feelings emotionally. Do you feelings emotionally, like sell the intensity of different scenes, or just sit there and be really funny? Animation to me is the purest form of art and has been kidnapped by a bunch of hoodlums. We have to rescue them. Yet another quote by Guillermo del Toro, and I agree, because I believe animation can capture needs the same emotions that any live action movie can. For example, the Lego movie. I think it's a, it's a very great mess, has a very great message against mindless conformity or following the instructions and an inspiring individual creativity. It also has a, it shares this great message with imagine, incredibly imaginative and creative sets, comedy, and striking emotional beats. But some would maybe laugh in the face of me saying that this movie is just as good and sells the, a very similar message as The Matrix. Very popular movie also against mindless conformity. And I think that though they are geared at completely different audiences, The Matrix, an older audience, uh, the Lego movie at a younger audience, I think they can still sell the same message while being extremely totally different. Now, HBO removed 37 shows at once from its streaming service, I believe in 20, late 2021. If I may ask the, if I may ask the classroom, am I allowed to? Mm -hmm. How many of do you think were animation, Kate? All of them. Right? Not all of them, but 25 of them were animated. Were animated. So. Popular beloved shows like Infinity Train, Summer Camp Island, and Close Enough were all real, were all canceled and taken off the platform. 
And personally, I was a fan of Close Enough. But and shows like Infinity Train, Summer Camp Island, were all, had very big fan bases, and especially Infinity Train, which was said to be the next big animated show. And this was not limited to this was not limited to uh, newer series as well. Series like Uncle Grandpa and OKKO. OK These are legacy shows that have been on Cartoon Network for years and have proven to be successful in the past. And these are also very popular shows that I still hear people talking about on Twitter, Instagram, all over social media. And this is not a problem exclusive to HBO Max. Series like Inside Job and Dead End, this is not the Dead End yet. Have been, removed, have been canceled off Netflix, even though they have both been proved to be very popular and very well written and executed series. Though they just simply weren't popular enough. Netflix and HBO, they had if they had a thing where basically if the show wasn't hitting the top ten like for a consecutive amount of weeks or when a new series was released, no matter how good it was or seemingly popular it was, it would, they would just cancel the show because they didn't see the value in continuing and continuing these animated pieces. Now, Despite all that faces animation, it will always be a timeless and infinitely creative means of expression and storytelling. Though animation captures the hearts and minds of children, it is, it is shown to be a medium that can entertain many other audiences. It will always be more than a genre, and these movies and TV shows deserve the proper recognition because these stories are far too diverse stylistically and tonally to be compared so closely as a single genre. Finally. Animated movies have the potential to tell stories and sub-concepts just as well and sometimes better than live-action movies and can be the and the destruction of these series silence of the artists who worked so hard in the stories they had to tell. Animation is a truly special medium that allowed, that lets us see things that we could never comprehend and deserves to be considered on the same level as their live-action counterparts because animation is simple.